Welcome back to Athletic Everyday, day number 324, and welcome back to another workout. Got some shorter approach jumps here, varying the target for the jumps. So instead of trying to touch a high object, I'm just trying to clear an object with my legs. Um, not really much extra benefit to doing this as opposed to trying to touch high object, other than just adding variety to the jumps. And, uh, you know, the shorter approach, again, adds variety, means you have to produce power from, you know, slightly less velocity coming into the takeoff. But I actually really enjoy jumping over this bar. Um, there's not much risk. You know, if, if you hit it with your feet, it just comes off. And, you know, I don't often change the height of it either, but I like to get more and more variety into the jumps. As you can see here, I'm starting to incorporate like a short little broad jump into a vertical jump. Not particularly familiar with these, like the movement literacy around different types of jumps and then, well, different jumps or, or movement patterns into a high vertical jump, uh, not particularly good. But, uh, you know, it's getting there. And, you know, all of this, again, it's adding movement literacy. It's improving my ability to jump in a variety of different contexts. And it's just fun. I really enjoyed doing this. And the main purpose of this workout was just to get some heavy-ish heavy, heavy -ish front squats in. At least heavy for where I'm at right now uh, in the training year, I guess. I'm definitely not my strongest at the moment. I think I was a lot stronger when I started athletic every day at the start of the year when I was coming off a weightlifting program almost a year ago now. Um... But, you know, that's where I am right now. I'm definitely jumping higher than I was at the start of the year as well. So, you know, there's that, there's that swings and roundabouts. You can't always be your strongest and your fastest at the same time, I don't think. Uh, you also can't be the most powerful uh, as well as the strongest. You know, there's going to be some trade-offs. You can't be super duper fast and then, you know, be maxim maximally strong. And you can't be super duper strong, you know, be putting on extra body weight so that you can squat a few extra kilos and then not be, and, and then be maximally fast. So working up to this top set here was uh, what 110 kilos for triples. Um, probably could have done maybe a little bit more, but I wanted to make sure my form was at least somewhat competent. The, the thing I'm looking for, the reason why I've done this side angle is so I can see the bar path and where the bar actually is in relation to, you can think of it as like an imaginary box. If you, to, if you were to draw a line down from the plate, either side of the plate, so you've got like this sort of rectangular box. You kind of want to make sure that the bar maintains the position in that path and the center of the bar stays more or less over the middle of your foot. The bar sort of starts to drift forwards or backwards. I don't think it would drift backwards, but if the bar starts to drift in any direction, then that's a good sign that you're going to lose balance, but also that there's probably something wrong with your squat mechanics. So yeah, front squats. Uh, I think I did maybe four, maybe five, I think it was five sets of three with 110. And then I increased the weight on the bar and did some quarter front squats. First set was a little bit jarring because you kind of have to stop yourself from doing a front squat. You get kind of into that quarter squat position. It's like, well, hang on. Usually I continue, continue the rest of the squat from here, do the other three quarters of the squat. Uh, but on the second set, I found it a little bit easier. I did three sets of five here. Uh, reason, reasoning behind doing quarter front squats is it just drilling the first portion of that movement. This is also the portion of the movement that you'll do for a split jerk, for instance. Uh, it's also very similar to the joint angle that you do for a vertical jump, for instance. Really helps to load up the quads maximally. Works on your ankle mobility as well, loaded ankle mobility. Uh, and I believe there was a study a while back that mentioned quarter squats and their benefits for vertical jump uh, training. So... That being said, figured why not incorporate just a couple of sets of some heavy-ish quarter front squats. Anyway, that's it for today's video, guys. Nice short one. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you in the next video.